Okay, so the recording has stand, started. Um, welcome everybody to our last seminar in our topical series on the nuclear topping and adramic physics group uh, at the University of Barcelona. Today we have the pleasure to um, host a seminar by uh, Chiranjip Mondal. Um, Chiranjip is known to most of you uh, after finishing his PhD in 2018 in uh, Institute of Nuclear Physics in Kolkata. He moved to Barcelona to work with uh, Xavier Viñas and Mario Centellas and the rest of the nuclear theory team. Uh, and since a few months ago, he's been based in LPC Caen, uh, where he's uh, working on neutron star models. And in fact, what he's going to talk about today is uh, flexible models for the neutron star equation of state. Um, Kiranjip is happy to take questions as we go along, so please uh, feel free to either, you know, interrupt or raise your hands. Uh, yeah, and having said that, then, you know, take it away, Kiranjip. Okay, thank you very much, Arno. Uh, first, I want to thank you uh, for inviting me this year because it's always a pleasure to come back to the people of Barcelona. I would be even happier if I would, could go there, you know, uh, spend some time with the people there because it's, it's uh, been some tough time, both in the department recently, during the last summer, so I don't know. Um, in future, maybe when I can go freely, I will try to be there. So today I am going to talk about a flexible model for a neutron star equation of state. And uh, most of you already know the preamble of the whole, uh, whole business, what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, especially, uh, I will try to discuss the implication of this uh, recent observation from NICER, which uh, we have tried to incorporate in the in the in the model we have been uh, trying to develop here. As Arnau said in the in the beginning, that uh, I am happy to take questions in the middle. Actually, I prefer that uh, more than uh, waiting for the end. So please feel free to raise your hand. Arnau will uh, interrupt me uh, to to convey the question what you have, or you can just. Uh, let yourself uh, unmute and, and you can you can speak up. So uh, before going into the into the results, I I will try to establish the, the the preamble of the of the discussion what we are going to have. So let us start by uh, looking at the the structure of the neutron star. So this is a neutron star which is cold. Uh, it has uh, been through a long time since it was formed. So it has cooled down and it has attained equilibrium. And in that in that particular time of the time of the configuration, you can see that the, the typical neutron structure is given going from outside to inwards is is a very thin few centimeters of atmosphere where there is still some gas left as we we have them in the in the normal stars. And then if further you go in uh, towards the center, the density increases. And then the nuclei starts to uh, become <clears throat> organized in a crystal uh, with a background electron gas, what we, what we uh, give the name as outer crust. And then we further go in, the density increases further and the neutron starts to dip from the, from the nuclei, making a very typical structure of the inner crust, where you can think of the situation is like a nuclei immersed in a background neutron gas and electron gas. Further increase in the density when you go further inside, you, you encounter the, the, I mean, the concept of nuclei completely washes away. So you have uh, completely free nuclear matter. And further in, there is conjecture of having in the inner core other degrees of freedom like uh, hyperons or quarks, but that is not uh, sufficed yet from the observation we have at the present time. So with all this in mind, the, the thing what we, what we need to keep in mind that when we want to observe them in, a, in, in some kind of observatory through their uh, some kind of radiation or some other form like gravitational waves, the only information what is important to the gravitational uh, or, or, or gravitational uh, calculations like the general relativity, the only thing which is important from the structural point of view is the equation of state. But the structure of equation of state has a, has a completely one-to-one -one correspondence with the, with the equation of state, uh, the, the MR, MR relation through the general relativity. So 
if ideally if we if we can from some observation completely point, pin down the the mass radius curve of a neutron star uh, identifying different sources and uh, trying to see the mass and radius of those stars if we can pin down the the mass radius relation in this uh, mr plane then there is a one to one mapping to the equation of state plane which is basically the pressure versus energy density uh, calculated for uh, nuclear matter or, or matter per se. So if we can pin down the MR completely, then you can, you can completely pin down the, the, the equation of state. However, the situation is not ideal as we know that in nuclear physics, uh, like life, everything is uh, very relative. So we need to rely on observations, which gives us some idea about the equation of state, but then uh, when we start from the other approach, we start from the nuclear interaction. So we need to satisfy some kind of uh, observational constant which comes from different uh, different uh, facilities. <clears throat> like the recent uh, mass radius observation of the, the nicer collaboration or the, the tidal probability distribution as a function of, uh, or the probability distribution function of the tidal probability coming from the, the, the famous uh, GW170817 event, uh, where two neutron stars merged to give some uh, gravitational wave, uh, which was directly observed in the, in the ligo vergo collaboration. Now, as I just said previously, that these uh, GR calculations to understand the, the static properties of neutron star, like the mass and radius, is completely oblivion to the, to the the composition of the matter. It only concerns the equation of state. So even if you just give a function which um, explains the pressure as a function of energy density without even knowing what is there inside, you can, you can calculate the, or you can explain the data you have in the, in the, in the mass radius, uh, what you're observing. But this is not all because what we want to understand from the other approach, we want so also want to understand what is there inside the star and for that, we need to need to understand the nuclear interaction, and in some way uh, to explain this uh, in a in a kind of coherent way, so that we also know about the the overall feature of mass and radius. But at the same time, we have the idea of what is inside those stars. So as I just said, that in the in the very inner inner core of the star, there is a there is conjectures of having other degrees of freedom like hyperon sort of works. But that is not sufficed yet. But this composition is very, very important to model uh, some observations which follows the, the, the quantities which are considered of the static properties of star. For example, in the gravitational wave event of uh, GW170817, following the gravitational wave, there was a kilonova signal. So to, to construct a a theoretical structure for this uh, kilonova signals coming out of this uh, merger, uh, merger event, you need to have the idea of what is there inside the star or, or even the surface of the star, which gives this kind of, uh, this kind of signals, which you can observe directly, directly through some instruments. And also beyond certain, uh, uh, certain number in the, in the nuclear chart, the, the nucleosynthesis of heavy elements is not explained through, uh, through the, through the fusion reactions inside the star. So we need a proper modeling of supernova explosions or even beyond, beyond uh, when uh, these uh, two neutron stars march, those uh, heavy elements formed. So for those kind of uh, calculations, you need uh, the, the basis of, uh, basis of the, 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 the structure channel of, of, the, of the different nuclei per se. And uh, those are needed to, to properly simulate your, your calculations to understand those uh, signals coming from a different astrophysical event. Now, for this to, to do in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a coherent way, there are two complementary approach. There are two complementary approaches. One approach is that you, you start from a nuclear interaction, which we do uh, conventionally as nuclear physicists. So what we do, we start from some, uh, some modelized uh, a nuclear interaction between uh, nucleons. And then we, 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 we optimize the parameters of those uh, nuclear interaction uh, in some phenomenological way by, by fitting directly the data we have in the, in the lab 
of our terrestrial conditions like the the mass or the or the charge area and those kind of things and then what we do we we take that into the context of astrophysical calculation and we we solve the the general relativity equation in the in the tolman oppenheimer volkov uh, equations and then we try to see how how that evolve in the in the information of uh, astrophysical uh, quantities like the mass and radius of neutron stars so to do this uh, we have been we have been doing this in in the in the group with uh, with the barcelona nuclear physics group so where we have uh, taken up the 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 finite edge goni interactions uh, which which are extremely successful explaining the the binding energy and many many other nuclear physics data in the in the laboratory but until very recently uh, there was uh, no uh, goni interaction available which could which could reach uh, a mass as high as two solar mass uh, which is kind of a, a, a kind of benchmark uh, every interaction has to achieve uh, to to be to be successfully uh, successfully accepted for other applications so conventionally finite range, finite range interactions like uh, goni interaction has uh, some uh, some extra advantage over other uh, mean field uh, mean field uh, interactions uh, or or zero range interactions is that the the pairing uh, pairing residual pairing interaction can be can be treated uh, with the with the same uh, form of the interaction uh, both in the mean field and the, and the pairing residual pairing field so of course this these effects are much more prominent in in finite nuclear structures which has been um, studied over almost uh, three four last three four decades but as i said uh, there was no interaction which could explain the the, the maximum mass of neutron star to be as high as two solar mass and only a couple of years ago the group in uh, barcelona they could uh, they could tweak the symmetry energy behavior of d1m interaction which is uh, which has having the 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 RMS deviation of the binding energy is few hundred keV, and uh, they could tweak the, the the symmetry energy behavior of this interaction, but keeping almost the the good behavior in the in the finite nuclear sector of the D1M interaction, and they call it D1M star, and that could reach the two solar mass uh, constant given by the the radio astronomy observation of of this uh, pulsar J0348. So when I arrived in Barcelona, the the the, the extension of that uh, calculation was to implement this uh, interaction in the inner crust. So now uh, we want to do uh, or we want to calculate. We wanted to calculate the the structure of the inner crust with this interaction in the in the Wignot uh, approximation. And what we what we uh, what we published in this in this paper in 2020. Which you can see that now, if I if I plot the total equation of state in the MR, MR curve, the the black line is the uh, is the one which was originally obtained with uh, uh, the crust was uh, uh, explained through some polytropic uh, polytropic fitting, but that will be replaced by by the structure calculation of the inner crust. So it does not give uh, a big difference in the in the equation of state in this particular plot. So the, you see that they only differ in the low mass sector. Because uh, we have actually uh, uh, make modification in the in the lower density part in the inner crust, so uh, for obvious reasons, the differences are very nominal and only only observe, I mean only visible in the in the in the low mass sector. But the important thing here is that now we have a model which uh, has the information on the structure all the way from the inner crust to the core, and that we can and that we can use for further dynamical simulations. Which you cannot do if you do not have the structural information. So the obvious uh, extension of that was uh, to even extend further in the in the in the outer crust, which we are doing currently, uh, which we we will uh, publish very soon. And uh, this can be completely used in in the in the in the further dynamical simulations uh, where you can we can you can model even the the the. Things like kilonova or or even nuclear synthesis calculation. Now going uh, forward from here, the the next complementary approach, uh, which is uh, quite popular nowadays to explain a plethora of data which is existing existing in the community, is that the, the agnostic approach, where 
you you model your equation of state without uh, without even bothering uh, what is there inside the neutron star. So a typical uh, comparison for that, just going into that uh, details of that uh, agnostic approach, is that uh, if we if we take a, take up an equation of state which is formed by uh, quarks uh, or assuming quarks inside the star or hadrons inside the star, they might have some uh, visible differences in the in the MR plot MR plane. But in the present context of the the mass radius uh, observations, particularly from NICER, the the bounds are not tight enough from where you can you can you can completely dismantle this uh, these two different hypotheses of uh, of uh, the, the composition of the neutron star so the the question what i am going to address primarily today that uh, we are not going to uh, discuss about the the exotic degrees of freedom like the hyperons or the or the or the quark degrees of freedom but rather we confine ourselves in the in the context of completely nucleonic hypothesis, meaning that when I go inside the core of the star, I assume that there are only nucleons, that is neutrons and protons, and with that we want to understand whether we can we can we can we can still explain or or completely understand from the present data that whether we 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 completely understand the high density behavior of the nucleonic hypothesis. So the question why I, I particularly want to address is that uh, even considering only nucleons inside the inside the high density matter, are there any degeneracies within the nucleoning hypothesis? The particular problem which I am going to discuss very soon is that suppose uh, we we from some observation pinpoint the exact line in the MR plane, and as I said before, that it has been established that the static properties have this one-to-one -one correspondence between the equation of state and the static properties. So the MR plane information can be one-to-one -one, uh, uh, mapped into the information on the equation of state. But does that suffice on the high density behavior of the nucleonic hypothesis? Which, is, which, uh, which means that can we, can we uh, exactly pinpoint the unique properties of nuclear matter Having known the information on the on the equation of state of the beta equilibrated matter, so of course uh, we have to respect uh, certain uh, certain constants which we have from different observation. For example, the the groundbreaking observation of uh, maximum mass of neutron star uh, from radio astronomy through some uh, Shapiro delay in 2010 and 2013, where it was observed that uh, there has been existence of a neutron star which could surpass uh, two times the mass of the sun. And then came in 2017, the, the groundbreaking observation of gravitational wave originated from two uh, neutron star uh, merging with each other. And then only a couple of months ago, uh, we had this uh, also very unique observation of mass and radius at the same time from the NICER collaboration. The first uh, extraterrestrial uh, neutron star probe, uh, which we have, even though uh, at the current context, uh, the, the constant, particularly on the radius, is not as constraining as we would have liked as nuclear physicists, but nevertheless, we have to comply with what we have right now at the moment. So the, the con in the context of uh, nucleonic hypothesis, in a, in a very recent uh, review article, uh, was pointed out that uh, in, in different type of uh, nucleonic hypothesis, for example, uh, zero range non-relativistic uh, models like SCAR models, or the, the relativistic approach of uh, nonlinear couplings, uh, what they call NW uh, omega meson coupling, uh, omega, yeah, uh, omega coupling. And then there are also density dependent coupling models or the microscopic interactions. So you can see that all these different interactions they need to satisfy the two solar mass uh, constant, uh, which was given by these observations in, by the radio astronomy. But you can see that they, they produce very similar equation of state, even though they are based on very, very different uh, assumption on how the nuclear interactions uh, behave. So from the bottoms up approach, uh, that if we, if we start from a nuclear interaction, we have an equation of state coming from that model. But the question what I want to address today is that 
if I have very similar equation of state coming from very different uh, starting points, uh, can we have very similar model for, for high density matter? And the next question, which is, uh, which is going to be the later part of the talk is that uh, what impacts of these uh, different observations have if I, if I comply with uh, the new learning hypothesis. So- So Jim, can I ask? Uh, yes, please. So can I express the question you are trying to address, like saying that you want to invert the top equations? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, in, in principally, it's not, not inversion per se, but if you have, if you have a line in the, in the equation of state plane that gives you very unique uh, mass radius relation. So this is what I mean inversion. I mean, this is not exactly mathematical inversion, but if you have one line in the equation of state, it exactly transforms to one line in the, in the mass radius plane. So, so if you have mass radius plane, you cannot satisfy that exact line with arbitrary equation of state. You need to have one particular equation of state. So this is what I mean one-to-one uh, -one correspondence. Um, before we move forward, can you show the plot uh, on that review paper? So, yeah. I mean, you, 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 in, in the plot, you made the point that, you know, all of these equations of state are relatively similar. And I take it that, you know, they all have similar radii, for instance. Yeah. Uh, is, is this, I mean, but we all know, you know, equations of state can be cooked up and moved up yeah. and down. So I, I suspect that. It, would you agree that this is the selection process of going through this two solar mass um, maximum that is sort of tightening those equations of state or, or, or do you think it's important? Well, uh, as you know, the, the, the history of uh, this, uh, especially this uh, hyperenergy equation of state, for example, when this uh, radio astronomy uh, result came up, uh, the hyperenergy equation of state during the time, none of them could uh, reproduce the two solar mass. But of course, then uh, as a community, they came up with some cooking, of course, and they can reach now some uh, two solar mass constant. But as I said, I mean, it needs to be in a, in a plane. So you need to have the constant in the both uh, M and R. This is why the, the, the observation of NICER is so important because if they can pinpoint a certain region of the, of the MR plane, then it will be very, very constraining to, to go through that particular region. Then it will not be any arbitrary, arbitrary equation of state, which can just only reach the two solar mass. Right now, the, the, particularly for the, the two solar mass uh, radius, uh, radius estimation by the NICER, I mean, it, it is not constraining enough so that it can, can uh, rule out many equation of state. But of course, an equation of state like this uh, quark stars, which prefer to be software equation of state, meaning that it prefers to have smaller radii in, uh, in high mass stars. They are almost at the age of the observation. Uh, I mean, at the one sigma limit of uh, present nicer observation. I, I, I guess what I, mean, what I meant is if in this selection plot, you were plotting equations of state that did not reach two solar masses, you would have a much larger range. Yes, absolutely. Uh, radii, absolutely. Yes. Uh, et cetera, right? Yes. The thing is obviously, you know, now, nowadays, yeah. They are ruled out by observations, and then yeah. even the, the subset that remains is relatively similar. And I see your point. What you want to do now is, of course, ask yourself how much uh, this yes. constraints our understanding. Yes, I mean, actually, the, the, the point you raised, uh, that was the, the primary motivation of the, the work by, uh, by uh, Mario and Xavier, that they wanted to have uh, an interaction which could uh, reach to a solar mass, and which interaction is, is quite successful explaining other type of data. I mean, of course, in nuclear physics, uh, I mean, it depends on what data you believe in because uh, I mean, all the nuclear models, uh, as you know, that they're based on some phenomenological interactions. So they are successful in one sector, but they might be uh, um, falling a bit short. So we need to always uh, keep on doing these adjustments so that uh, in, the, in the ideal universe, uh, with a single interaction, we can explain all the different nuclear physics data. That, we, that is our goal as a, as a community for having that ideal case. Okay, so.
so moving on from here, so uh, the, 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 the later part of the talk will be based on uh, what impacts these uh, new measurements have in this uh, so-called meta-modeling approach, what I'm going to just describe now. So this is a model uh, which based on the energy density functional in beta equilibrium. And uh, the, the potential, the nuclear potential is based on uh, uh, density expansion of, uh, you can call it a Fermi momentum or just the density. And uh, the, the expansion is based around the saturation uh, for this present, uh, for, for this particular choice made by these uh, uh, authors in 2018. But depending on the choice you, you, can, you, you can have, I mean, you can do this expansion in other densities if you prefer. So that does not, this particular model gives just one example of uh, this density expansion method, which you can, which you can do in principle in other, other, other reference density also, uh, which was particularly for this calculation was chosen as the saturation density. There are some sudden advantages uh, doing this expansion around the saturation density, as we know that uh, the energy per particle uh, of a, any, any given a neutron and proton density, uh, where you, you, can, you can, of course, uh, sum up them to give the total density, and you can, you can define some sort of uh, uh, a parameter, which is uh, usual uh, to, to, to explain the, the Taylor's expansion. And of course, you need to have the, the quantity which defines the, the pro neutron proton uh, content asymmetry in the system. So you, you just, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the parabolic approximation, you, you suffice the energy per particle as the, the symmetric nuclear matter, which does not have any asymmetry, the delta equals to zero. And then you have the, the uh, quadratic uh, dependence on the, on the asymmetry. And as we know that the symmetric nuclear matter has this uh, minimum around the saturation. So that gives us the leverage of uh, expanding this uh, uh, energy per particle around the saturation. So you have these parameters, energy per particle at saturation, the first derivative vanishes, because the, the pressure is zero uh, for symmetric nuclear matter saturation. So the first quantity you have is the second order uh, derivative of uh, the energy per particle with respect to density and the third order and so on and so forth. So we, uh, in this particular discussion today, we will restrict ourselves to the uh, fourth order of uh, expansion, but uh, it, 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 completely, it completely explains the kind of density we can achieve in, in, in physical system but you can of course go even in higher powers. So the trick which was played uh, in this particular uh, paper was that you, you now uh, approximate the, the kinetic energy path through some uh, uh, non-relativistic Fermi gas approximation. And then you can sort out the power ordering in, in, in the potential path in, a, in, a, in the same format, same format as you do in, in, the, in the energy per particle of infinite matter. So in this way, what one can do is that now you can you can explain the energy per particle of uh, the given neutron and proton density. You can have a potential where the parameters are now directly connected to. I mean, this all these uh, v alpha they can be written in different orders of combinations of these different parameters. <clears throat> what I have listed for the symmetric nuclear matter and the symmetry energy. So this has some uh, certain advantages over uh, over. The, the conventional approach of uh, starting from the nuclear interaction. What happens is that in nuclear interactions, we, we start from some phenomenological form of the interaction, which forces one to have certain correlations present between the different nuclear matter properties, uh, which, uh, which uh, explains the high density behavior of the matter. But here, as they are the parameters themselves, you have this uh, independence of those parameters to have them in a more more freedom. So you can vary them more freely uh, without without having this dependence on the on the nuclear interaction. On the other extreme, in the in the agnostic approaches, uh, which is completely oblivion to the to the structure of the structure of the matter in the high density, here you cannot do that because you need to respect a certain behavior of these different parameters where the constants come from direct nuclear physics observation. And as you are uh, constrained by the neutron proton density in the beta equilibrium, so those uh, um, those constants in the in the low density uh, low density matter, which comes from the from the laboratory experiments, so those restriction has to be 
has to be respected in this in this particular approach. So with this with this freedom in mind, uh, I mean of course uh, uh, compared to the compared to the uh, completely agnostic approaches, now uh, even with having the freedom of varying the nuclear parameters more freely, but you can predict still within the nuclear learning hypothesis the composition uh, composition of the high density matter. So the first exercise, uh, what we did is that we started from a given interaction. So, I mean, we, we have chosen FHU2 uh, because it has some certain properties. It can reach two solar mass. Uh, it, has, uh, it has explained uh, certain behaviors of uh, the symmetry energy, and it can explain some uh, certain uh, um, observation of uh, neutron skin thickness, for example. So for these different reasons, we have chosen this particular interaction, which is a, a uh, nonlinear coupling uh, relativistic interaction, but uh, in the matter of fact, we could have done with any other interaction, and we have done it also for some other interactions. But today, I have chosen this uh, for for demonstration. So, so this is the the pressure as a function of density for this given interaction, and uh, the composition uh, given in terms of the asymmetry as a function of density is given in this upper plot. So now, what we can do is that. Going by this, uh, by this, uh, uh, by this emblem of uh, energy per particle given in the meta model, so we can we can we can tweak the higher order parameters, uh, particularly this uh, these four parameters Q0, Z0, and Q sim and Z sim, which are the uh, connected to the third order and fourth order derivative of uh, symmetric nuclear matter and symmetry energy. They are completely unconstant in the in the current. Uh, Current knowledge of nuclear physics. So what we did that we we fitted the the, the pressure of the uh, pressure of the given model as a function of density by two, by optimizing those higher order parameters, but keeping fixed uh, to the values of their original model. So if we demand that up to a certain density, because we we fitted the whole pressure regime, I mean of course we we had to stop at some point. So you can see that there is a very, very little differences uh, even up to the density, uh, which is the density is enough to explain the maximum mass of neutron star. So now the, the real, I mean, if we dive into the real situation that uh, we do not know exactly the, the pressure as a function of density. So what we did, uh, we looked into the, the data given by the LIGO and their, their posterior provides the the pressure as a function of density with some certain uncertainty. So we scale down in the context of our given model, which is FSU2. So we, we do this mapping of, uh, I mean, uh, associating relative errors uh, in, that, in that given density uh, by scaling that in terms of the LIGO, what we call input LIGO error. So we associated, we associated with the black line, the, the gray region, which is kind of so-called experimental error, if, if we can call it, um, which is a, which is an ed educational uh, guess on the error because that is what is given by the the posterior of the LIGO. So if we if we believe in the, in this uh, error bar on the on the pressure, we want to transform that uh, into the into the information what we can extract on the composition. And if we do that, uh, what we observe particularly that uh, I mean even though we, we predict uh, the, the median of the line very close to the black line, which is the, the, the what we call uh, LIGO fit, producing very similar pressure throughout the whole density regime, but the uncertainty associated for the composition is completely out of, out of the barrier. Now, as I have been saying again and again, that if we can pinpoint, pinpoint uh, the, the exact MR, MR line, we can, we can have the exact uh, uh, equation of state line, which is the case for the, for the red line. You can see that the pressure is one over another and the error associated was very, very small. So you, can, you cannot see that in, in this particular plane, uh, in, the, in, the, in this plot in the, in the bottom panel, but you can see that it has some very small error in the, in the high density part of the composition. But you can see that now the composition predicted by demanding the equation of state to be very, very similar to the original model is different from the original model predicted. So both the cases where we have re uh, realistic error associated in the pressure, 
predicts very, very uh, diverge uh, or very, very broad error in the composition. On the other extreme, if we demand very precise pressure as a function of density, the, the composition becomes different from what is predicted by the original model. Kiran, can I ask a question? I'm not sure I fully understood all the error yes. um, considerations here. So the, 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 in the gray, correct me if I'm wrong, the gray band, Yes. You take your FSU equation of state and add yes. errors on it that are exactly the same as the post, I mean, 68% posterior yes. er errors I mean, applied. You, you, you scale it. You scale it because uh, you, you multiply by the, by the pressure value of the LIGO. Uh, right. Sorry, you multiply by the pressure value by the FSU too, and you divide by right. the pressure value of the, of the I LIGO. See. I see. So somehow that's, that if... You know, if LIGO had measured this equation of state, yes, it would have, exactly it would that have measured point. it with this gray error band. Yes. Exactly, exactly then, that is the, right. yeah. Then, then you put this gray error band back into the beta equilibrium. Yes. Because you, can, you can do that because you have the uh, parameters of... Um, um, yes, this is exactly and get, what... And then you get the blue band in the beta equilibrated yes. composition. Is that right? Yes, okay. yes. Good. yes. Thank you. That's, uh, I, I understand now. Okay. okay, so as you can see that both, both the demands, if you have really uh, realistic errors, you, you, you predict error band, which is uh, completely diverged. And if you predict, uh, if you demand very precise equation of state, then you, you start to uh, follow a different line, which is predicted by the original line. So far, so good. Now we want to address the other, other uh, other uh, important stuff that is that, that to, to be complied with the, with the observational data we have. For that, we have, um, uh, we have set up uh, Bayesian analysis uh, with our meta model, uh, where we, we do not have this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, the band of different uh, the parameters, which is uh, in our case is the, is the, is the nuclear matter parameters as, uh, Conventionally done in agnostic approaches that you you vary them quite uh, quite madly to be honest uh, from a very very wide range, but we start from uh, from our educa educational gaze from the nuclear physics uh, uh, information. So, for example, just to give an example, uh, we have uh, energy per particle of uh, symmetry nuclear matter between minus 15 and minus 17, and as we know that this value should be lying very close to minus 16. So there is no reason to have this value at minus 10 or minus 20. So these kind of uh, considerations are also there in, uh, in say, for example, uh, slope parameter, the value of L or uh, Kcm, uh, the next higher order, or, or the other parameters like the effective mass and so on and so forth. So the first thing uh, which we set up, uh, starting from this uh, already informed prior, we, oh. we do a fitting uh, over sure. the whole, uh, Sorry, Chiru, yeah. uh, I have a question. Oh, could you go back to the previous slide, please? Yes. Yes. So maybe it's very naive, but you see uh, in your asymmetry, the error for the LIGO fit is huge. I mean, yeah. diverging literally very much. Yeah. So how do you in that region decide which of the models gave a perfect and a better result. I mean, the elf LIGO and the elf astro are different from each other than the black line. But well, the ELF LIGO, I mean, for the sake of uh, uh, accepting it, it's not very far from the FEC2 in, yes. uh, in the beta equilibrium. Yes. So uh, the error bar is so huge there. How do you decide which one is a better, uh, better and consistent result? Uh, both could be equally good. Yes, this is this is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, uh, if if you have a model which can produce the back line in the in the equation of state plane, can be lying anywhere in this blue region. Yes, yes, yes. So this is the point I'm trying to make. There is no oh, maybe there is I missed a, it. Sorry. <laughs> there is a big uh, uncertainty in the composition uh, if you start from a very similar equation of state. This is the point we are trying to make. So ah. so the meta model gives you this leverage uh, jumping between this uh, whole region. Uh, mm -hmm. Having bothered about, uh, you have to be in a particular line. So this is this is the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, sorry, I must have lost somewhere. No, no, it's okay. 
So, uh, so what are you saying that uh, we we start from already an informed fire? Uh, uh, Arnav, uh, remind me when I when I have to stop. Uh, I, I will go yeah, through. Yeah, you're you're about forty minutes through, so maybe ten more minutes. Ten. Okay. Okay. I, 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 this this is this is not going to take more than ten minutes. So uh, then, what we start with, we we, we feed the the whole uh, uh, mass table of uh, 2016, and uh, uh, that is what we define as the prior. And of course, then we have to establish certain filters, uh, which uh, which is coming from different observational constants. The first one is not from an observation, but rather a, a theoretical calculation at low densities. And as we know that the, the chiral effective field theory gives very precise uh, information on the low density uh, low density matter. So what we did, we 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 pass through uh, this particular filter where our node model needs to be within this certain band in the energy. Uh, energy density plane. So what we call as the low density filter in the rest of the top. Then comes the high density filter where we uh, need to make sure that our equation of states are causal at all densities. They have the thermodynamic stability, meaning that the pressure never should decrease as a function of density. And of course, then we need to also comply with the, 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 the radio astronomy observation of the maximum mass, uh, which is at the two solar mass. And then at the same time, we also made sure that the, this equation of state also produce uh, uh, or, or comply with the, the, the uh, probability distribution function of the dimensionless tidal uniformity of the GW170817 event. And then on top of that, we wanted to see the, the effect of NICER also. So we combine all of these different uh, filters together and what we we uh, give the name as all in the in the rest of the rest of the discussion. So the first thing uh, which we observed is the, the posterior of the of the parameter space we are we are uh, trying to explore, and you can see that the the prior is already having a peak. The black line, the black dotted line, is uh, around 15, but when we put it through the low density filter, it already uh, makes the peak even even uh, more prominent, around uh, minus 16 or so. So when we have everything together, that is the preferred value of the uh, saturation uh, saturation energy uh, or energy per particular saturation, let's say. So similarly, uh, we have uh, the, the distribution of the other, uh, other uh, isoscalar properties like the saturation density or the um, uh, incompressibility of cement nuclear matter. And particularly, I want to emphasize the case of QSAT, where you can see that the the prior is pretty flat, where the low density filter given by the blue line somehow prefers uh, lower values of the preferred range we have given. However, the, the high density filter and the LIGO Virgo data, they prefer uh, somehow on the, on the larger values of uh, QSAT. And when we combine everything together, uh, they, they fall in between these two preferences uh, for this uh, higher order uh, uh, symmetric uh, nuclear matter parameter. Similarly, in the case of uh, the, the symmetry energy sector or the isovector sector, uh, you, you see that the, the high density does not give much on the, on the symmetry energy. It's essentially the low density filters which uh, uh, completely determines the lower density behaviors of the symmetry energy, uh, which has some effect when you go further and further high in the, in the order of expansion, you can see that the high density behavior uh, has much and much and uh, more effect uh, when you go to the higher order parameters. Of course, uh, we need to see that uh, these different parameters, what we have uh, uh, put through our models, uh, how, how much correlations they have among each other. I mean, of course, uh, this is just for the sake of information. Uh, in, the, in the end of the talk, if you have uh, certain uh, questions regarding these different correlations, you can ask them. But I do not have any preference to to discuss in this particular plot, except for maybe this uh, uh, this uh, slope parameter and the and the symmetry energy correlation, which is uh, very conventionally observed in in many models uh, in the in the literature. Then the different observations, uh, observational uh, constants, and how they are correlated uh, with the parameters uh, in in our model space. So. Here also, particularly, we have seen some correlations in the in the transition pressure uh, with the symmetry energy parameters. 
or the proton fraction in the center of the star of one point source solar mass star or the two solar mass star, they have certain preferences uh, of uh, connecting to the connecting to the symmetry energy and saturation at higher densities. So this will be more clear in the in the later part where we we will see that the the distribution of these different uh, different uh, observational quantities. Uh, this is of course the, the obligatory uh, correlation studies between the different observational quantities, and this can be actually uh, connected to the previous two plots where we observe the correlation between the parameters and the correlation between the parameters and the observables that can be translated into some information between the different correlations of uh, the, the different observations uh, what we have predicted. So you can see particularly here that the lambda 1.4, that which is meaning the tidal liveability of 1.4 solar mass star is completely correlated with the, uh, the, the radius of the 1.4 solar mass star and which we conventionally know that if you plot in the in the in the tidal liveability versus radius plane, uh, they have a complete correlation with one another. So very similar uh, thing one can observe also, for example, the tidal liveability of two solar mass star with the radius of the two solar mass star. And then uh, here we we have the prediction on the on the on the on the symmetry energy and symmetry nuclear matter uh, for for different filters. As you can see, for the prior, even though it is quite Good, uh, quite well informed uh, through the the prior we have chosen, the 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 low density part becomes completely determined when we put it through the low density filter. So for the symmetry energy, which is given by the the, the color yellow and orange, uh, they become more precise when we put through the low density filter in the low density regime. But when it passes through the high density filter, the uncertainties in the high densities also greatly reduce. Uh, uh, for this particular uh, uh, particular energy energy uh, energy for energy for symmetry nuclear matter and uh, and uh, symmetry energy at high density, and when we combine everything together, we make predictions which we also also try to explore in our in, in our previous study uh, how how it transforms into the into the composition. This is the 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 plane of uh, classical transition density. With the with the classical transition pressure, as you can see that the prior is pretty pretty broad, but when we pass it through the the low density filter, the of course we we now we probe the lower lower density part of the of the equation of state, so it makes much more precise uh, information on the classical transition density, so it becomes it becomes narrower in the in the in the in the x axis, but peculiarly what we have observed that if we Push, uh, put it through the high density filter, it also greatly reduced in the in the in the classical transition pressure. In the beginning, we did not understand why this happens because uh, apparently the high density filter only affects the high density behavior of the equation of state, where the the classical transition pressure and the classical transition density is a is a behavior which is more typical of the lower density part because uh, this is the transition density between the core and the and the inner crust. But what we realized that this high density filter also has the, the filter on the causality. So there are models which predicts higher transition pressures, they violate the causality very soon. So when we pass them through the high density filter, those models rule out and eventually it narrows down the, the classical transition pressure uh, for, for, the, for the equation of state. And when you combine everything together, we predict quite a narrow, uh, both in the, uh, pressure and the density plane of the classical transition. Now we, we see the, the, the prediction or, or the probability distribution function of the, 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 the crust thickness of uh, 1.4 solar mass star and the two solar mass star. And you can see that uh, the, the, I mean, peculiarly here also the, 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 the thickness of the crust is quite well affected by, by the high density filter. Or rather, that the LIGO Virgo data has a, a reasonable effect on the on the on the crust part also, both in the 1.4 solar mass and in the two solar mass star. And when we look into the uh, central proton fraction, that is the the proton fraction in the center of the star for 1.4 solar mass star and two solar mass star, you can see that the the prediction has some influence for the 1.4 solar mass star. So uh, when we put through it uh, the, the high density filter, 
it it constrains the 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 proton fraction in the center of the star. However, it shows very little effect uh, when we have uh, calculated the similar uh, behavior for the two solar mass star. And if you recall now, the 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 first phase was what where we show uh, showed that the the, the the composition becomes much and much more diverse when we go to the higher densities. So for two solar mass stars, the central proton fraction is already uh, quite less predicted within the present uh, scenario. So these informations are quite complementary from this calculation here and the what we observe in the in the in the compositional calculations uh, transforming the information from equation of state to the to the to the the composition through meta model. Now, of course, uh, the tidal deformability uh, of uh, one point solar mass star and two solar mass star. And you can see that the low density filter does not have much effect. And as this is a direct uh, prediction on the, on the tidal deformability, so definitely it has more effect on the, on the tidal deformability prediction. And it completely determines both in the case of one point four solar mass and two solar mass star. And as uh, they are uh, correlated to each other, as I have pointed out in the correlation plot, the, the tidal deformability and radius has one-to-one uh, -one correlation. So these two plots have very similar features as, uh, as can be understood by their uh, correlation uh, existing between, between, the, between the tidal deformability and the radius. Now the prediction is on the equation of state, uh, the final equation of state. And as I was uh, telling you that I was uh, scaling our, our error band on the pressure. So this is the plot I was, going, I was talking about before. The, the, the confidence limit given by the, the tidal deformability. And as you can see that it is in some places broader, particularly in the high density, it's broader than the final prediction what was made by the, by the ligo vargo collaboration. But as it passes through the low density filter, it affects the low density part. And when we put the high density filter, it, it, it uh, transforms the information in the high density part. And when we combine everything together, it complies very well uh, almost throughout the whole density regime uh, with the, with the LIGO Virgo data uh, for the equation of state. And this, of course, has this one to one mapping in the, in the, in the, in the mass radius plane. Uh, but particularly, I want to point out that even the low density filter has some effect on the mass radius plane, particularly for the 1.4 solar mass star. So, this is the, the two nicer observations uh, for, for guiding the eye. We have spotted in the same plot. Uh, where this uh, J0030 has some influence even from the low density filter. But when we put the high density filter and the LIGO Virgo collaboration uh, data, that it now complies uh, with, the, with, the, with the mass and the radius of, uh, of the prediction given by the NICE. Now, the take home uh, information from this whole plot is that now this whole preamble was set up in a, in a completely neat learning hypothesis. But even with that, we, we comply with the different observations uh, com coming from the nicer mass and radius uh, relations. But at the same time, uh, um, we also need to keep into account that uh, now when we talk about other degrees of freedom, for example, the quark uh, equation of state, which prefers much less, uh, uh, much less uh, radius in the, in the mass radius plane. So they almost fall in this region. So at the present uh, constant given by the nicer, uh, nicer uh, collaboration, the nuclear equation of state is completely, completely agreeable. So you, you cannot just say there is other degrees of freedom just by having the information on what we have from, uh, from different observation. So to conclude everything, uh, uh, what I have tried to establish or try to show that which is uh, already established in the literature, that there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the, the static uh, properties of neutron star with the general relativity through the equation of state. And uh, this can be translated uh, uh, into some uh, information on the high density matter uh, through some different uh, energy density functionals. But unfortunately, that is not precise enough with the, with the present information we have on different quantities. So within the nuclear learning hypothesis, what we have tried to see and what we have seen that, uh, that the static properties of neutron stars are not enough to pin down completely the composition. And even within the nuclear learning hypothesis, there is much uh, room for error, uh, which, uh, which is, is still need to be addressed in future. 
And uh, in the later part of the discussion, what we have seen the new cloning hypothesis is completely agreeable with the with the different type of observational data we have the we have in the in the present uh, scenario. And uh, if we need to uh, make uh, conclusive evidences on other degrees of freedom, we, we need much more uh, constraining uh, evidences from observation. So with that, I stop here and I apologize for uh, going a bit over time. No, that's all right, um, Thank you very much for a very nice and clear seminar. Does as, as anybody have any questions? So I have a perhaps general question, which is regarding this one-to-one -one relation between uh, questions of state and the M of R. Yes. So, so my question is, I mean, I understand that for a given equation of state, yes. uh, you, for each um, value of the, de of the density at the center of the star, you get one M of R, right? So yes. Yes. the relation between energy density at the center and, and N of R, M of R is one to one. But is it clear that the, um, I mean, for a given M of R uh, curve in this plot, there's yeah. only one equation of state that gives that M of R? Yes, as, as you just said, uh, uh, the information, what we are trying to understand that one point on, on this star, is a single central density. And that uh, particular central density uh, needs to go all the way up to zero to, to give your equation of state. And okay. to produce this uh, whole uh, uh, mass radius complying with each and every point in the, in the MR plane, I think you do not have uh, much room in the, in the, in the uh, equation of state plane. Okay. This is my understanding, I think. But 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 the, the 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 dependency is not not completely analytic as you just pointed out because the dependency is to the central density. You mm. have one point in the MR plane. You have one central density. That you are absolutely right on. Yeah, I don't think there is a well-defined statement about the inversion problem. No, no, right? no, absolutely not, absolutely yeah. not. This oh is this God. is much you. You could have two equations of state with two different central densities, yeah. Yeah. Um, which would give you the same mass and radius point. Uh -huh. yeah. Inter integrating out, giving you the same mass and radius point. So obviously, if you have one equation of state, different central densities give you different central, different mass and radii, but also two different equations of state could, in principle, have um, um, the same. Although I think the process that you are producing here numerically at least of, yeah. of inversion is, is safe and you're giving error bars and everything. So I think mm -hmm. that's, uh, um, you, you're getting away with, uh, yeah. Xavier, do you have a question? Okay, I have a question, yes. Oh, two questions actually. Yeah. One, <clears throat> when you show the energy density, you say that you split kinetic energy and, and potential energy, no? Yeah. Yeah, what do you do with the kinetic energy? So, yes, I, I was expecting this question already. So. <laughs> is this raw power five thirds or? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, I mean, it... with or without effective mass? Uh, with effective mass. Uh, with effective I, mass. Yeah, with effective mass. Uh, oh, so you, right. you, you need to have a, a, a um, actually, I mean, this is a, this is a, an approximation, uh, considering it as a as non UAC Fermi gas. So where you have the density dependence of five by three, and then you invoke also, because you can see that I have given both in terms of neutron and proton density. So you, you write basically the, the kinetic energy in terms of a scalar density and an uh, isovector density, if you like. So you yeah. involve the asymmetry of the system and, uh, and the scalar density. And then you you finally have this uh, the, the scalar density dependence of five by three as you have in non relativistic models. But this basically this functional basically describes the core. Yes, yes. The this is this is not for this is not for finite nucleus. I think they have also. I mean, what we have applied in the later part. Uh, what I I I I did not give much information on how they do the neutral physics fit, but they have also. Uh, 
quantified some uh, surface parameters, uh, which on on top of this uh, on top of this uh, uh, high density matter, you can you can have those surface parameters, which you can which you can go all the way up to the density zero, and you can you can even describe the binding energies of nuclei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know I know the business. Yes, another question. Assume that all the maximum mass that you have considered up to here are two solar masses. Yeah. But if the maximum mass uh, be uh, 2.2 or 2.3 or something like that, as some data seems to indicate, all your technology can be extrapolated or you need additional information in your meta model for describing this. From the modeling point of view, scenarios. From the modeling point of view, you do not need anything extra. I mean, as you can see, I mean, uh, within the Bayesian analysis, you you everything you do in terms of uh, probability distribution function. So even within within the current uh, uh, within the current uh, constant we have from different observations, the models we have started with, as I am emphasizing again and again, and this is a very well informed prior from the nuclear physics point of view. And you can already predict uh, some uh, uh, masses of neutron star, which is actually 2.2, which you you are asking. So within the 68% uh, confidence limit, it may not reach as high as that. But then you have two sigma limit, which already goes up to point, uh, 2.5 solar mass. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is no, uh, th there is nothing in the technology point of view of meta models which uh, restricts us going to even higher masses. But uh, of course, I mean that is. Uh, uh, depending on how the observations uh, turn out to be, but even with that, the the error bars uh, on on different things are not precise enough to completely pinpoint this issue. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um. I'd like to pick up the comment following up on what Xavier said and, and, and a question. Yeah. I think the comment is, uh, I mean, you do have uh, some, you presumably have predictions for the maximum mass as well. I think that's that's pretty interesting, right? So now you have a model which is sort of all nucleonic only and you can at least say how the uh, maximum mass is changing by taking into account these different sets of data. And that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that would be a relevant, um, um, you know, piece of information, right? This, Yes, yes, two point two or two point three. I mean, clearly three is ruled out to say something, right? And that yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is uh, that is almost ruled out by causality. Uh, yeah, and that's right. Yes, but it's already something, right? And if you can, you know, go down to two point five or whatever, that's that's an interesting yeah. point. Um, I wanted to ask about what are you doing at the? I mean, you, you've shown some, I guess, unexpected correlations between crust core transition and um, are you? Are you match? Are you doing any matching at the car cross uh, crust core transition point? How are you treating that? Um, uh, well, uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, actually we are we are following uh, the, the the most trivial approach uh, one can have. That is, uh, you calculate from both the sides, and you 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 prefer the one which has the minimum energy at certain density. Right. And you make sure, I mean, of course, you throw away those models where you have this pressure mismatch. I mean, if you go uh, down in pressure, uh, even though you prefer the core in terms of energy, we do not accept those models through our, through our filters. Right. Okay. Yeah, but your uh, determination of the crash core transition, I suppose that is pure thermodynamical method, no? Where the where the core, the uniform core, core uh, starts to show instabilities, no? Is this yeah. situation? Yeah. I mean that you don't uh, take into account the, the dynamical method that allows you to take into account more precisely the formation of clusters and really the, the, the grass core transition in the in the dynamical method is close is closer to what you obtain if you go from the from the crust to the core so probably yes, you are uh, a little bit high at least for what i know about this yes 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 i mean this, this of course 
this of course is a, a very serious issue uh, when we want to make precise information on the on the on the on the composition uh, let's say but here also we have to keep the the computational point of view because if you go through the dynamical uh, dynamical calculation of the cross polarization you you need to invest some more time on the on the computation and here we are dealing a uh, number of models in millions so mm -hmm. we have to be realistic in terms of in terms of computation so this is why i mean of course the the, the issue you are you are raising is is quite important uh, but for this present calculation and, and as we are more interested particularly in the mass radius or tidal deformability these are informations which are concerning of a bit higher density which is already in the core so the the very precise information on the on the matching of classical transition uh, in my opinion does not affect uh, much in those behaviors but from the computational point of view it it will have it will have some complication uh, because uh, it will it will need some more time uh, going through these millions of models uh, in this in this yeah. Can I still do a last question? <laughs> sure, go, go ahead. You have not done anything about the moment of inertia of the star, or you have um, plans to do something like that, or what is the, uh, the situation? Uh, well, I, I, I think I have a plot with uh, uh, with uh, moment of inertia. I, I will share that if I can find in my other PDF. Uh, but uh, personally, I did not do that calculation myself, so this is why I prefer not to show it. But we we uh, okay. surely did, we surely did calculate uh, the the crustal moment of inertia or the ratio uh, with uh, with. Uh, in principle, the crustal fraction of the yes yes this is what is I... irrelevant for irrelevant for. The... Glitching, right? Glitching and superfluid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. But this is another history. That's all right. Kiran Jebeting, I'm going to stop the recording now, maybe for okay. the uh, for the purposes of uh, everybody else, and then um, we can stay, stick around for.